now that you know what you're looking for, you're looking for asset base. You're chasing the flow of ink, how input data is coming in, how it's processed and where it's going. So how do you do that? So there are multiple approaches towards it. But even before you begin, step zero starts at getting the manual and reading the manual. The code review, the biggest benefit of code review is everything is open to you, right? It's white box. So make the most of it. Get as much documentation, as much support information you can about the code base. That is what is going to build your context and that's what's going to help you build your mental model about what should be going on in the application. Once you have your documentation ready and you have been through it, you can move on to some approaches. Now, bear in mind, this is not a set in stone approach, right? You will realize that some of these approaches are even subsets of each other. So it's not like you'll have to do these exactly to do a code review. It really depends on the scope of your code review. Are you reviewing the entire code base? Are you reviewing a component? Are you reviewing just some pull requests? Or are you reviewing output from SAS tooling, DevSecOps tooling that you have, like Sneak, SEMgrep, CodeQL, whatever. So it totally depends on these factors. And most important factor is how much time do you have? The more the amount of time you have, the better, obviously, the outcome will be. But you can work with limited times as well. It's not an issue at all, given that you're following the right approaches. So starting off some basic approaches, the very basic approach is source to sync, right? You find all the entry points you can use your, you can use your code editor to do that with LSP enabled. You can use the documentation, find all the entry points, and then you look for how the data is being processed, right? The asset is entering the source and how is it flowing to the sink? So pretty much you, an example would be in a flask application, you know, that like routes are declared like this. So you can look into all the user entry points, all the routes that are declared, and you can then verify how the request data is being passed, where it's being passed, how it's being processed, etc. That's very basic source to sync. Bottom up, you can do the opposite. You can go from sync to source. So instead of going from the entry point, finding the entry points and tracing the data from there, you can go the opposite. You can do pattern matching, grab, rip grab, whatever you prefer, and find syncs, which are, again, unsafe functions in an application, necessarily an application, but a language and a text type. So you can rip grab, you can pattern match for those vulnerable functions, vulnerable patterns. And then you can traverse backwards. So let's say there's a fun vulnerable function eval, right? So there's eval and you're seeing that eval is somewhere used on line 100, 150 or whatever. You want to look back which function is calling eval and how. And is there any input data which is flowing into eval without being sanitized or validated? So that's how you're going to do the reverse pattern matching. Simple. You can use the rib grep, grab. You can use interactive tooling like John, which parses the AST and creates a code property graph. So you can use whatever tooling works for you. But essentially what you're doing is pattern matching. 